Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So, Microsoft is busy finalizing our next optional bug fix C release update, KB5067036, with insiders in the release preview channel for Windows 11 versions 25H2 and 24H2. So, it's in its final testing now, and it was made available late yesterday in my part of the world to insiders in release preview. So, I would suggest it's going to start rolling out the update starting Tuesday the 28th for Windows 11, 24 and 25 H2 next week. Now there's quite a lot going on with this next update 5067036 and at this stage there are 22 new features and all the fixes and new features I'm going to mention now when the update does make it to the general public next week are rolling out gradually. So you may see these if you do decide to install the update or you may not. So just keep that in mind. So rolling out gradually, first of all, we get the new redesigned start menu. With Microsoft saying you've got a new scrollable all section. You've got category views and grid views. The start menu also adapts to your screen size, so larger displays show more pinned apps. Recommendations and categories by default. And you've also got the phone link integration with a new mobile device button next to search that lets you expand or collapse content from your connected phone, which I think is a small touch, but a significant move. And I've covered this new start menu quite in depth on the channel. You can just do a search. So that's just a quick recap. And that's going to start rolling out gradually next week. And then for voice access, which is an accessibility feature, I'm just going to mention these quickly. Always in favor of accessibility features. And voice access lets you use your voice to type and control your device. We've got one, two, three new features for voice access. First of all, there's a new fluid dictation in voice access, which Microsoft says makes voice-based dictation smoother and smarter. Apparently, it helps correct grammar, punctuation, and filler words in real time. And it'll be powered by an on-device small language model, SLM, offering fast and private processing. And this fluid dictation, Microsoft says, will be on by default. So just take note of that. And then the next new feature is you can now configure a delay before voice command is executed. And then the third new feature is voice access now supports Japanese expanding accessibility for more users. And then if you are running a Copilot Plus PC, the new AI agent in settings now supports French. And then if we head back to settings, head over to our accounts page, Emails and accounts is now called your accounts. So that's just a bit of a user interface tweak. And then for Copilot Plus PCs, there are eight new features for click to do. So Microsoft really focusing on this click to do. Now I'm just going to mention these very quickly. So the first new feature is the prompt box in click to do streamlines interaction with Copilot, helping you work more efficiently. So you've now got a new prompt box. The second is you can now translate on screen text with Microsoft Copilot with click to do. The third is click to do provides unit conversions now for length, area, volume, height, temperature, and speed. With Microsoft saying when you hover over a number plus unit, a floating tooltip will show you the conversation. The next new feature Microsoft says by pressing and holding two fingers anywhere on your Copilot Plus PC, with a touch screen, you can simultaneously launch Click To Do. Next new Click To Do feature, you can now select objects using freeform selection, rectangle selection, and control and click. Click To Do can now detect tables. The next one, Live Persona cards from Microsoft 365 now appear in Click To Do. There's also visual cues that can now make key items such as emails, tables, and more light up on your screen as you launch Click To Do. And then there's also a fix over and above those eight new features. Click to do may unexpectedly invoke sometimes when pressing Windows key and P. That's been addressed. 
So quite a lot going on with that click to do feature. And then for File Explorer, we've got three new features and a bunch of fixes. So the first new feature is Microsoft says that the recommended files in File Explorer Home are now available in personal Microsoft accounts and local accounts. The next new feature is when you hover over a file in File Explorer Home, commands such as Open File Location or Ask Copilot are now present. Microsoft says this experience is available if you're signed in with a Microsoft account and is not available in the EEA at this stage. And then the third new feature is mainly for developers, but I'm going to mention it anyway because it's listed as new. Storage provider APIs are now available for cloud providers to integrate with File Explorer Home. And then just to go through one, two, three, four, five fixes for File Explorer. The File Explorer context menu may unexpectedly switch back and forth between the normal view and show more options on each right click. So I think that's an important fix. When opening a folder from another app, your custom view, including sorting files by name, changing the icon size or removing grouping, unexpectedly resets back to default. So that's quite an important fix as well. And then the body of the File Explorer window may no longer respond to mouse clicks after invoking the context menu. So that's important. It seems that all of these are important. And then the next fix is extracting very large archive folders, 1.5 gigabytes plus, may fail with a catastrophic error, Microsoft says, 0x8000FFFF. So that's an important fix. And then the last fix, File Explorer may become unresponsive when opening home. So five important fixes for File Explorer. So good to see that Microsoft is working on the File Explorer. And then the taskbar gets two new features and a fix. And the new battery icons should start rolling out and are now improved to display colored icons to indicate charging states, simplified overlays that don't block the percentage bars and an option to turn the battery percentage on and off. And I think this is a very small yet significant change that's taken quite a while to make it to stable. So hopefully we start seeing the new battery indicators and icons with that percentage, making it to more computers with this next optional update. So I'm very happy to see that. And then the next new feature for the taskbar is when you hover over an open app icon on the taskbar, a thumbnail preview of the app window appears with a new share with Copilot button beneath this preview. Now, I can't confirm if that's just for Copilot plus PCs, but nonetheless, that's listed as a new feature. And then if you hover over an app icon on the taskbar and then click the window preview, the preview may dismiss and not bring the window to the foreground. So that's also an important little fix taking place there. And then the lock screen also gets new battery icons featuring colored indicators and battery percentage, which will appear in the lower right corner of the lock screen. So good to see those battery indicators making it into the lock screen as well. And then just to mention the next new feature, a new Microsoft 365 Copilot page is added to the Get Started experience for commercial devices managed with an active Microsoft 365 subscription. And then in the OOBE, the Windows Setup experience, you can now name your default user folder during setup. So if we head back to File Explorer, and I actually think this is a very nice move. This is your default Windows folder. You can now name that in the OBE, which I think is a great move. There's an improvement also for logging into your PC. Microsoft says it's made underlying changes to help improve the performance of loading the taskbar when unlocking your PC after coming out of sleep. So that's quite important. And then for Windows Update, there are two improvements. The first is Microsoft has addressed an underlying issue which can cause update and shutdown to not actually shut down your PC after updating. And that's been a niggly issue I have been posting on over the last uh, week or two. And then the next Windows Update improvement has addressed underlying issues which can cause Windows Update to fail with install error 
0x800F0983. So those are two important improvements for Windows Update. And then for display and graphics, we get three fixes. The first is apps and browsers may have partially stuck on screen content when other maximize full screen apps are updating in the background. After recent updates, some video and games may unexpectedly display red. That's been fixed, so that's quite important. And then if we head to the settings system display, if connected devices platform service has been disabled, settings may crash when trying to open settings system display. So that's important. And then just two more to mention for the purpose of this video. There's a fix for open and save dialog where certain apps may become unresponsive when launching the open or save dialog. Now, all of those fixes and new features, as mentioned, are rolling out gradually. Quite a lot going on. And then we get two fixes rolling out normally, which everyone will get. I'm going to just mention one of them because it's quite important. Apparently, the update address is an issue. If we just head into Windows Update quickly. That was caused by this update, which addresses an issue where protected content playback fails on some machines after installing KB5064081. And I think that was a known issue, if my memory serves me correct. So that's also an important fix. So that's it, guys. That's more or less what we'll be rolling out with our next optional bug fix C-release update for both Windows 11 25 and 24H2. KB5067036, and that should make it to the stable channel over the next coming days. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.